Let this go good so that we can share your word and give us your heart about your word so that we aren't in vain. We are in right in the center of your will. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Welcome all. We're grateful that you're with us. and we are, Hello. We are overwhelmed by his mercy this day. And we desperately need his mercy. In oh God. So uh, here we are all the way into Luke 9. Uh, there are very long chapters in Luke and they are very um, detailed. And we're grateful for the detail. We're grateful for the compassion of the Lord Jesus that so that so radiates out of this uh, out of this book and out of uh, our lives. And uh, so we're going to try this in New Living today, Luke chapter 9. Yeah, Luke 9, uh, verse 1, New Living Translation. You should mention, I guess, that uh, this chapter of Luke uh, 9 is uh, essentially the end of the, uh, with the period that is referred to as uh, Jesus' Galilean ministry. Uh, where he's up north around the Lake of Galilee. Um, so uh, it's, it represents a turning point in his ministry. Uh, after this, of course, he starts uh, his orientation to the south and to Jerusalem. Um, so we are now about to hear about, um, well, okay, let's take it first at a time here. Uh, the, subtop the subtitle here is Jesus Sends Out the Twelve Disciples. Verse 1, one day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Okay, so it's a fascinating uh, 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 practicum. Uh, in some colleges, good morning, Mike, good morning, Linda. In some colleges, they want you to do an internship in the in the field of study that you're going to progress in, and uh, this is the internship for the disciples. Uh, in the next chapter, by the way, he sends out 70-something. <laughs> Here it's 12. So, and he sent them out two by two, uh, which is a glorious and smart way to go. You don't want to go by yourself because you don't want to go by yourself. And the reason for that is if you go by yourself, then you got nobody like praying for you and backing you up and stuff. Right. It's also a Jewish uh, practice uh, when it comes to uh, testimony that two is the number of the adequate witness. Yeah. You should have at least two people uh, testifying. Okay. And that's true in court law and so forth, and, and it applies here as well. So we sent them out two by two, and we find uh, that. Uh, and it's a fascinating group of disciples. And perhaps the Lord Jesus sends Simon the Zealot out with Matthew the tax collector. Because these guys have come from radically different backgrounds. Uh, a zealot is one that would want to burn down Rome and everything that represents Rome. Uh, that would do uh, any kind of terrorist activity to, to uh, cut the power of Rome. And Matthew was obviously a tax collector who tax, collected taxes for Rome, but they aren't—they aren't what they used to be. Uh, so this is this is a uh, internship. Go go and do what I taught you to do. Go go do what you've watched me do. Cast out demons, um, tell of the kingdom, and heal diseases. In verse two. I. Yep, again, Luke 9, uh, New Living Translation, verse 2. Yep. Then he sent them out to tell everyone about the kingdom of God and to heal the sick, as you were just saying. Verse 3, take nothing for your journey. This is red letter, Jesus speaking. Uh, may I uh, interject as if I were the uh, amplifier here? <laughs> take nothing that would uh, for your journey that would um, be uh, 
of your own sustenance. In other words, don't take anything that is going to support you. That's right. Support you personally. Okay? This is what he instructed them. Don't take a walking stick or traveler's bag, food money, food or money, or even a change of clothes. Wherever you go, stay in the same house until you leave town. And if a town refuses to welcome you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned those people to their fate. Okay. So Israel may be the size of New Jersey. And he's got central places where he is and where, and he's sending them out in kind of, in kind of diverse directions. So, so that the gospel goes forward, people are healed, they hear about the kingdom of God, and the disciples, the disciples get ownership of these things, don't take that word wrong, that, that they get, they get to do the stuff that Jesus is doing, and, and they're commanded to do the stuff that Jesus is doing with no, no resources of their own. Like, if you, <laughs> if you're sent out on a journey with no money, no walking stick, not even a change of clothes, <laughs> what happens? You go into a village, the two by two, and you start to, you start to, okay, well, we know that the Smith family are followers of Jesus, we'll go to his house. That might be, but more often you go to the town center and you say, Jesus loves you, he has a plan for your life. And, and, and then somebody in the town goes, would you stay with us? We really want to hear more. And you stay with them, and then the next day you go out into the town village and you do it all over again. And the, the people who have taken you in feed you and actually clothe you and they they take care of you so that you can be effective in your ministry so sometimes sometimes we give um sometimes we miss the people in the background who are not on the public pulpit but are the supporters and the taker carers of <laughs> Just made that word up, uh, so that you can be, so that you can do what you're called to do. People do what they're called to do to make that happen. And if somebody refuses you in town, or if a town refuses you, just walk away and, and shake your dust off the feet and and leave that you have abandoned these people to their fate. So, uh, what an amazing. Uh, couple of days this is, or a couple of weeks this is, or whatever, a couple of days probably. Um, don't take any money. Don't take, don't take a traveler's bag. Don't, don't take nothing. Don't take anything that would support you in this time. And when you got nothing, <coughs> when you got nothing on your own, and you only got Jesus, he proves out again and again that is sufficient for you. Right. Yes, yeah, so they began their circuit of the villages. This is verse 6. Preaching the good news and healing the sick. Follow on Jesus' directives. That's right. And how, uh, how amazing is it when you become consumers of the Word of God, but you become contributing, let, letting that go forth. And, and the Lord Jesus said, these and greater things you'll do in my name, and that's not because of, um, it's because of quantity, that we can be, that we can be disciples of Jesus in every part of the world, and how amazing that is. Um, so, uh, so they go. <laughs> they begin their circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. Um, it's a, astonishing. Jesus gives them the command, and, and nobody tries to sneak a Snickers bar out. Well, I'll just take this for them. This is, they just do what he tells them to do, 
and they are amazed at what happens in their hands. Like, mm. they've seen the Lord Jesus do this, they've seen him feed people, they've seen him uh, walk on, they've seen him calm the oceans, they've seen him, like, incredible stuff, but they're kind of the, they're kind of the security team around him, making sure nobody, you know, whatever, um, and they're just watching the, and they're, they're, uh, they're adamant about this is Christ the Messiah, and, but now they get to do it. <laughs> Talking about it has value, watching it has value, but now you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, <clears throat> this is as much for the people uh, to get the word out, get the message about the kingdom and so forth, and, and uh, <clears throat> confirm that message by the authority of their ability to heal just as Jesus healed. Yes. Um, but it's also for them, too, to realize <laughs> that they're to go in a way where they are totally, 100%, completely dependent on the Lord. That's right. On the power of the Lord to complete this mission. They're not taking anything of their own strength or any of their own resources. It's, it's, uh, it's them as conduits as channels That's right. as um, pipelines uh to the power of god uh and in, 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 in uh, doing this in that service capacity of nothing of us so to speak nothing from our flesh yeah. but 100 percent from the from the uh the will and power of god uh to bless the people amen and you, you think about it <laughs> like we said in the next chapter, he's going to send 70. So, or 72, whatever it is. So, the, uh, you know, you think about how that conversation goes between the 12 and the 70. Whoa, you should have seen what happened when Jesus sent 12 of us out. We went and we did miracles and we preached the gospel. And, and uh, you're going to have such a blast <laughs> to the from the testimony of the 12 into the 70. So... Uh, how amazing this is that the Lord Jesus has empowered his disciples to do what he's called them to do. Now, we also are empowered to do what God has called us to do. We are empowered to do that which he has called us to do. We are empowered, but we are not empowered to do what we're not supposed to do. Like, there's a whole number of good things that we could be doing, and bless God for that. But the thing is, to do the thing, or things, that he's called you to do, and trust God for the things he has not called you to do. Uh, there's various ministries in our little church, and, and what are you called to do, and what are you called not to do? And sometimes we can get overwhelmed with good things, and miss out on the great thing that God wants us to do. Or sometimes it looks like this is less important than that. Well, the most important thing you can do is do what God calls you to do. So here is a, uh, a miraculous transition um, that the people, the 12 disciples are sent out two by two to make a difference, and they do. And <laughs> how cool is that? And then uh, they just... There, the practical part of following Jesus is that we be people of faith and not just talk in the talk, but we spend time in the Word and in worship and in fellowship and in, and in teaching and training and mentoring so that the kingdom of God can go forth. And here these guys are going out um, two by two and making a difference in in at least 12 different communities um, where, you know, where they're, where they're sent to go. How amazing. How amazing. And the people at the other end get to be a blessing to them. Come mm -hmm. stay in my house, please. And they, they feed them and they have fellowship together. And I've told you the story of a little tiny church that we love. And um, some churches that we ministered at, 
we stayed in a hotel. That happened almost all the time. But in this house, they wanted missionaries to stay in their spare bedroom in there. Um, and so when we did that, then we got a chance to, you know, to, to care about their kids and for their kids to see how missionaries are real people and for them, for, for their kids to pray for us and for whatever. So it was a wonderful connection and, and uh, you know, oh God, that we can do that again, you know, with, uh, with, the, with the message that you have given us. And we just think, and and in their and in their life, we got a chance. They, you know, they fed us and they prayed with us, and they, um, and, and we became essentially a part of their family over that twenty-four or thirty-six hour period. And how cool! So in these days, the people of a town, a particular family in a town, took the disciples in and had the blessing of ministering to them. How amazing that is. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Final thoughts. Uh, sorry? Final thoughts. Oh, you want to uh, conclude it there? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, you know, trying to compare uh, the directives that Jesus gave directly to these 12 at that time. Uh, to what our, our, our ministries may be today. We have to remember that today we are uh, more, um, shall we say, well, let's say, put it this way, the Holy Spirit is actually closer to us than Jesus in his physical body. Okay. He seated at the right hand of the Father. So uh, the directives we get today um, should be, uh, from uh, more directly from the Holy Spirit Himself. That's right. That's right. And uh, and it's we're at the end of the uh, church period, not the beginning. So uh, things are different now. The Word of uh, about Jesus, I mean, it's 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 well known internationally, um, even among uh, the secular uh, folks that. Uh, um, at least they have an outline of his story through the uh, various holidays we, we keep and so forth. Um, so uh, the point is that um, we have we have um, we have different resources at our, our disposal at this point. Um, and, um, you know, it is up, up to us to use what we've got. The important thing is if we go all the way back to the first commandment. Love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, body, spirit, everything you've got. Okay? <laughs> to do that, to pledge your entire being uh, to loving the Lord and thereby um, uh, extending his message through you from within that context. Uh, that, uh, that to me is um, where we are. Uh, today, we're not, uh, he is at, it's a different kind of situation there where the, 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 the he's essentially beginning uh, the church age and the ministry of the church age, and uh, he's trying to still uh, establish uh, the power of God, even to the people who are closest to him, even those who have seen his, him perform miracles directly, um, by now, uh, we've got 2,000 years later, and there's an awful lot that's transpired, and uh, both good and bad things in his name. Yeah. And um, we have to keep that in mind, too, that uh, th there has been apostasy, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yes. Uh, in fact, it's a big question whether it ever really gets better again, but uh, there is a major ap apostasy at the end of this age. So we're dealing in, in uh, very different circumstances. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the blessing of, of the original um, directives are the same. That's right. Uh, to essentially, you know, to practice agape love and develop your faith. And frankly, you know, looking in retrospect, what else is this world good for? <laughs> You know, it's not, it doesn't support these things. In fact, it provides headwind to these things. It provides resistance 
to agape and to faith. And the net result of that is that both agape and faith are developed by the resistance of the world. So we're dealing, you know, a different circumstance, but still the same dispensation. And we'll be and we'll be there until the second coming. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you empowered your disciples to do to preach the gospel and to do miracles. We thank you that the same the same spirit that was available after Pentecost is available now. We would ask for your great grace that we would walk in joy, peace and power. That would be the vessels that we would think your thoughts that would speak your words that would be obedient to the minutest detail. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your joy, peace and power. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord, again. For the instruction, the direction that you give us through your word and your spirit. I just pray that you'll help us continue to reach for that. The innermost meaning of everything that you're putting forth here and make it as relevant, make it relevant to us that we might do what we're supposed to do to lead the lives we should lead, lead to your praise and glory. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Have a blessed day all. Walk in faith. Have a good one. Glad you could join us. Thank you.